Hello guys, in the previous videos we created the server world and the client world manually and I've noticed that it created some issues with the sub scenes and in this video I'm gonna redo the connection and I'm gonna let the auto connect bootstrap to create the server world and the client world and I'm just gonna do the connection manually. This way the sub scenes are gonna be automatically loaded and we don't need to handle everything manually and create issues that might catch us in the future. So I've already installed installed the entities package and this is a new project by the way simply I'm just gonna create a script and name it connection manager and another one I am going to name this one auto connect bootstrap first we're gonna use unity netcode and unity engine scripting that's for using preserve and we inherit from client server bootstrap and we're gonna override initialize this time instead of returning false we're gonna return base that initialize which is going to automatically create the server world and the client world for us so we don't need to create the world ourselves now we can go to the connection manager and create a IP for our server an IP for our client and a port for both of them and then we can create a function name it connect and to do a few checks I am going to create a variable call it connecting it is going to be a boolean if we are connecting we're just gonna return then we're gonna set the connecting to true and here we can create a i enumerator name it initialize connection and then we can call that inside our connect function so i'm gonna create two variables to detect whether this is a client or server or both of them both of these values could be true if we're using the editor so it's simply going to check client server bootstrap and a variable inside that bootstrap called requested play type and if the requested play type is client and server then both of them are going to be true otherwise it's going to be decided based on whether it is server or client and here i am going to make sure both the server and client has been created by doing a while loop making sure if it is server and we have the server world and if we are client we have the client world and now like the previous videos we can do the connection but in order to make the connection between the worlds, we need to actually access the worlds. So to get a world, we can simply create a variable here. One of them is going to be server world. So whenever we want to get the server world, we're going to loop through all the worlds and we are going to return the one with game server flag. The same thing for the client world. When we want to get the client world, we are going to loop through the worlds get the one with the game client flag this way we don't have to store the worlds inside the variable we can get them anytime we want so back to the connect function like the previous video we are going to check if we are the server then we are going to use the server world which is this variable it's gonna call that entity manager and we are going to do the rest of the things listen on this IP and port and if we are the client we're going to call the client world which is going to return this and then we are going to connect to that connect IP and port and finally set the value for connecting to false so simply like this we can make our connection using this IP and port so we could change it in the inspector let's create an empty game object i'm going to name it connection manager and we can attach it here and let's just for testing go and call the connect function inside our start function of course later on when you want to implement this inside your game you might want to call this function when you direct your players into another scene but that's just up to you to do your project however you want and there is one more important thing that we need to do let's create the awake function and inside the awake function we are going to say application running background true because if it is set to false and during the play mode if you give focus to another window then the connection between client and the server is going to be interrupted so if we go back to the unity and I'm just gonna create a sub scene and inside this we can create a bunch of stuff let's create a plane and maybe a box or something so if I play the project now you see that our sub scene is fine we have our server world and the client world and we are connected here it is 
This way we no longer need to bother ourselves by manually loading the subscenes and our connection is going to happen using this data that we defined here. For example, if I change this to another IP address, then we should see a problem with the client connecting to the server. If we go to the play mode tools, you'll see that this one is trying to connect, saying connecting, but it cannot because the server is not listening on the IP that we set over here. So that's how you do the connection. And there is one important thing that I like to mention if we go to the project settings and if we go to the entities and build, you'll see that there are some build options. Here, netcode client target, you'd wanna put this on client because you don't want to build for client and server when you're actually just building for the client. So there is no option for the server, but I guess this is for the games that don't have host. If you want to have host in your games, then I guess you should put it on client and server. But usually when you make a game with netcode for entities, you'd want to host it on a dedicated server, not allow player host. So you better choose client, but it is up to you and the depends on what type of game you're trying to make. So that's something you might want to look into. And I've been planning to create a project with netcode for entities, but I'm waiting for unity.animation and unity.terrain. Without those two, any project that we create requires a lot of extra work and a lot of different hybrid styles. So once Unity finds a solid way to do animations and terrain using dots, then we literally can make any type of multiplayer game we want using Unity. We could create large scale multiplayers like Squad, Fortnite, DayZ, and other types of games. We could have hundreds of players in the same sessions, even thousands if we have the proper hardware on our server and write optimized code. So for now, I'm just waiting on Unity to release solutions for animation and terrain in dots. Hopefully we see those in Unity 6. So I hope Hope you enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe thanks for watching